Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the third type of factorizing, which is the difference of two squares. So before I get into this, I also want to do another recap, okay? So let's say you were multiplying x minus y in one bracket with x plus y in another bracket. Okay, so double brackets. So like before, you would take the first term, x, multiply it by the second bracket, x plus y, and take the second term and multiply it by the second bracket, x plus y. Now, multiplying out these brackets, I want to show you what happens with this particular example. So x by x will give you the x squared x by y will give you xy, minus y times x will give you minus yx or xy, it doesn't matter which way around, we'll do it algebraically or should I say uh, in alphabetical order, the x comes first, so we'll put the x first, um, but it is the very same thing as minus yx, and minus y by plus y is minus by plus is minus y by y is y squared. Now, Always at this point, we look to then tidy up the terms or simplify the terms. In other words, you can add together the things that are the same. And we can see here the things that are the same are these xy terms. And if you have a plus 1xy and a minus 1xy, they cancel each other out. So we're left with nothing in the middle. And the, la the only two terms we are left with as our final answer is x squared minus y squared. Now the reason this happened was because the terms worked out to be the same, there was the same amount, one is a plus, one's a minus, so they're automatically going to cancel each other out. And all we're left with then is the two squares and the difference, which implies subtract, of the two squares. So when we're factorizing, Remember, we're going from this final result to try and get all the way back up here. And if you have a particular example like this one, where you have a square subtract a square, in other words, the difference of two squares, then what has had to have happened is the middle terms have, have had to have cancelled. So the reason for them to have had to have cancelled is you must have had a plus and you must have had a minus in order for us to end up with a plus xy minus xy for there then to be nothing for the middle term. So this means that this can be a really quick one to factorize because if you spot straight away that you have the difference of two squares then in the brackets what you're going to end up is with the square root of this term which of course is x and x because x times x gives you the square x squared and the square root of this term which of course is going to be y times y because that's what gives you y squared. And the signs would have had to have been a minus and a plus in order for you to have cancelled your middle terms and be left with a minus square at the end. So let's take the example a squared minus b squared. And we've been asked to factorize it. Well, straight away, because I can spot it's a square, subtract a square, therefore the difference of two squares, I'm going to open my two brackets straight away. The square root of a squared is obviously a, and a times a will give you the a squared. And the square root of b squared is obviously b, because b times b gives you the b squared. And since we're left with no middle term, there must have been a plus in one bracket and a minus in the other for those middle terms to have been able to cancel. And that's my final answer. Okay. Let's try this one. Pause the video if you feel confident to give this one a go. Otherwise, listen along. So there's not much working out with these, okay? It's spotting that you have the difference of two squares, which is key. And then just you can just go straight ahead, open your brackets and put in the values. Um, what you might want to do is a little bit of working out, if it helps, if you have something a little bit more complicated like this one, is, okay, consider what is in fact being squared. Uh, the difference of two squares, you want to be sure you do have, in fact, the difference of two squares. Otherwise, this one doesn't work, okay? It has to be a square, subtract a square. And for it to be a square, you must have uh, something multiplied by itself to give that result, okay? That's what gives a, a square result. So, in order to get a 9x squared, what must have been multiplied to itself? So, in order to get a 9 the number that must have been multiplied to itself is 3, uh, 
And in order to get x squared, we must have multiplied an x by itself. So 3x, all to be squared, gives you the 9x squared. And for 16, the number that's multiplied to itself, or the square root of 16, is of course 4. And the square root of y squared, or the number that was multiplied to itself to get y squared, was y. So now we we'll open up a bracket straight away, and therefore it's each of these terms in the brackets, 3x by 3x, and 4y by 4y, and a plus and a minus must have been there in order for the middle terms to have cancelled. So that is your final answer. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try 4a squared minus b squared. Okay, so 4a squared minus b squared. Press pause, see how you get on with this one. So what's been squared here? So the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And the square root of a squared is a, because a times a is a squared. So b squared uh, is, of course, b all to b squared. So open up our brackets straight away then. Put your 2a in. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. And b times b is b squared. And of course, we need a plus and a minus in order for that middle term to have cancelled. Okay, try this one, pause the video and see how you get on with it. So what has been squared to get 25? Well, the answer is five, five times five is 25. And to get x squared, we must have had x times x. Now, this time, what about one? Well, one comes from one times one. So one is a square number. So one all to be squared gives you that answer. So now we have our two terms, open up your brackets, 5x times 5x is 25x squared, 1 times 1 is 1, and of course a plus and 1 and a minus in the other. Okay, so here is a higher level question. So watch out for something like this. Let's say you have 3x squared minus 27y squared. So this looks like it's the difference of two squares, but when we look a bit further, we spot straight away that three isn't a square number. Now that's a problem. So even though at first glance, this did look like the difference of, square, of two squares, it's not quite. So your only other option then is to pull out the common term. So if we consider it uh, as a common terms factorization, I can pull out the common factor 3. 3 goes into both 3 and 27. So if I pull that out, that's the only thing that's common to those two terms. So open up your brackets. What would you need to multiply to 3 to get 3x squared back? You need x squared. And what would you multiply to 3 to get minus 27y squared back? Well, you need a minus. Uh, you need to multiply by a 9. So 3 times 9 is 27. And you'd need, of course, y squared. Now, we're not quite finished because now, if you notice, what we have in the brackets is the difference of two squares. x squared is most certainly a square. 9 is a square number because 3 times 3. And y squared is most certainly a square. So what we're going to do now, keep the 3 out here, and we're going to open up our double brackets to factorize this bit. Okay? Because we can factorize Further. So to get x squared, it would have been x times x. To get 9y squared, it would have been 3y by 3y. And of course, there's no middle term, so a plus in one and a minus in the other. So 3, keep that 3, times x plus 3y and x minus 3y, that is your answer. So at higher level, watch out for that extra added little bit. If at first it, it looks like it's the difference of two squares, but it's not quite when you look at it a little more, in a little more detail, pull out the common term and then most likely what you will be left with is the difference of two squares. So further factorize it and then keep everything together in your final answer.